constants of multipliers. So it might be a hundred, and that might be two. So you say, well, this doesn't exist. Okay? So, and what to get this, we solve 1 plus gh equals 0. The characteristics. Solution of that, and that's all we've done. We've done it with root locus, bode, nyquist, you name it, we've solved that. And that tells us that and that and that doesn't tell us the A, B and the C. Let's see cos. Huh? Let's see cos the one dash so it dash. It can be sine, it can be a sinusoidal. Anything you like. The sine, cos, something in the brackets. Yeah? So this looks like this. Uh, don't worry too much about it. You're going to be up in the book. But this is a, well, it's a sign, actually, because I've drawn it north. And it's not down there, so I've drawn it to be a sign. Right. But I don't want to delve into that. I just want you to get the concepts. So, how do we solve this? Well, we solve this with root locus, bone, and Nyquist. We use these to tell us about the solution to that. Could you go over how to, uh, how you do a bow plot, please? Uh, yes, I can. And then Nyquist as well. And then Nyquist, <coughs> and then root locus. I'm not, I get root, root locus as well. That makes perfect sense. Bow really? is the only one. Yeah, it's absolutely fine, root locus. Yeah. Bow is the only one. So you understand where the stability limit is? And yeah, it's where, where the point on the imaginary axis is the maximum point. That's right, where, j where j over k, you, you keep... Because you keep increase k and it would move, so, yeah. Just curious, is the equation for the angle, is it, is it given in the, in the test, the equation for the angle? No, in the text. In the test, the answers, the question, the equation sheet, the equation for the angles. The of the asymptotes yeah. he's referring to. No, you've got to know those. Th there's not given. Hang on. It's the most easy thing. That if you can't do that, you can't do basic adding up and subtracting and dividing Just and in multiplying. Just in case, it's like it mutated somewhere. <coughs> pole. Yeah. Over it. I won't forget what you have. <laughs> One pole. Yep. Where's the locus? <coughs> Going along there. Forever yep. to infinity. Poles give rise, zero sink. Yep. Two poles. Yep. <coughs> it goes up. <coughs> so they mm, no. break. Three poles. One go out. Yeah? It exists when the number is odd. Yeah, you know what odd and even is? Yep. So it doesn't exist. So it exists when the number is odd, so it's got to exist. Somewhere. Yep. These clash, they break away. Yep. If this wasn't one there, it would break away in the middle. This one's there, it pushes it a bit further to the right. Yep. Because poles firm away, push them away. Zeros attract. This then, if that wasn't there, it goes straight up and down. This forces it to lock us away. So the locus does that. You can't get anything easier. But you, you, you don't matter how much exactly that angle. You can well, like well, you look, could. If this is a hundred and hundred thousand, yep. then this is in the middle. If this is A and B and this is an A, yep. you've got two of them there. Yep. So you've got to have some engineering about you. Right. So, yeah? so do, do and, and the engineering says that these repel and yep. these attract. Yeah, do I want to calculate the exact angle, or you don't need this to calculate uh, the exact angle? Of course you need the angle. If you have those, yes, then you know that this starts to push away, yeah, and then it goes that. Because you've got this one here. And if this one isn't here, you've got that. Yeah, and you've got a formula for the asymptote. Yep. Yeah, the sum of the poles divided minus the sum of the zero divided by the number you first thought of. Yeah. <coughs> m minus n over n minus n. 
Some of those divided by number of poles. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's the root locus. Yeah. And the important thing about the root locus is some of the poles minus the some of the zeros over the number of poles minus the what number of zeros. What have we got here? Something called the characteristic equation. Yeah? And you'll know the characteristics of the output. You won't know the output, you'll know its characteristics. You'll know whether it's unstable or not. You'll know whether it oscillates or not. So, so until k, when k is in this range, so k equals naught, and k equals k os, what you're doing is increasing k. When it gets to there, it starts to oscillate. So when the exam question says, what's the maximum k you can have without oscillations, it's that one. And you need that distance and that distance multiplied together, and you need that distance multiplied. Three distances. That one, that one, and that one. Well, you know that position. You know that position and that position, and you can assume the breakaway is halfway between the two, because it only said estimate. Yeah, so you have that plus that divided by two, multiplied by that. Distance? Gives that. you the, the distance of the breakaway. Okay. That distance times that distance times that distance. Because wherever you are on the lockers gives you, wherever you choose to put your lockers gives you the variation in K in here. Tells you K going from north upwards. So when k is equal to naught, you hit the poles. When k is at infinity, you are at the, lock, at the end of the lockers. When k is somewhere in between, you're here. And that comes from... Right. I, I'm, I know I'm still persisting in teaching you the subject rather than exam questions, but I think it helps. Uh, right, so, so let's take an example. Let's take I this example. Say, can I give you an, yeah. can I give you an example to, to do? Uh, do uh, can I give this one first of all, and then give me another okay, one? Okay. So let's take those two mm -hmm. and those two. Yeah. So what we've got in here is k over uh, multiplied by s plus c, where this is minus c, all over s plus a. S plus B. S plus. Are you, are would, you would, zero wouldn't C be the zero? S plus B. Can I change these to A, B, C, and B? So that is that. Um, when the question says, what is the value of K for oscillations to begin? Mm -hmm. You want that distance times that distance times that distance divided by that distance. Okay. Distance of the poles divided by the distance of the zero. And that will give you K wherever you are, that concept. Here, the question says, what is the value of k when oscillations begin? And you write, assuming that this is, a long, is big compared with these, and assuming I only want an estimate, I'll assume that that is in the middle of those two. Because if it isn't, I got a 5% error. Mm -hmm. But I don't care. Could it be, if it's only those two that break in the middle. Yeah? You put this one there, you push it away a bit. You put this one there, you pull it back a bit. So you don't pull it back as much as you push it away. You would do if you put that one there. And if you explain that, you don't have to go to your pocket calculator. Your slide rule. Because it's 3 times 4 divided by 5. Yeah. The distance to the, to, the, to the origin. Let me say it again. <coughs> this is... The, I want the K O, the gain, the value of K that causes begins oscillations. Yeah. So I want that distance multiplied by that distance multiplied by that distance 
divided by that distance. And it comes from this, poles and zero. And what this is, is a vector. Mm -hmm. yeah, so one vector, two vectors, three vectors divided by another vector. And K, and that, the reason it is upside down is that I want to find K. So you can say that K is equal to that lot over that to get that to one. Look. Mm -hmm. if, if you didn't have a, a zero, at all? Yeah. So yeah. Would, be, would you divide that by one then, or would that be divisible by zero? I divide what by zero? Uh, so, so, so you're saying the distances. If this. So what exist. you're saying is you take the distances of the the poles. Yes. Divided by the distance of the zero. Yes. But if you have no zero, you'd have yes. nothing on the bottom. So. Yeah, I've still got value for k. So, okay. So you, okay. Yeah. Cool. Okay, yeah. yeah. So, so you just do the distances of the yeah. poles times the yeah. other. Yeah. Okay. Look back here. I'm saying I'm here, operating point. This doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. So I need that distance, that distance, and that distance. Yeah. If this does exist, I want those two distances divided by that distance. Okay. So basically, I measure from the the breakaway point or from the origin, the distances. Uh, the distance comes. Uh, well, so, so well, you, you're, 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 you're measuring the point at which you want the k value at. Yes, yes that's right. What you're doing. I'm changing so, k. So you know when they first start oscillating is at the breakaway point. Yes. That's your k. Value. I'm changing k as the locus changes. Yeah. Yeah. And it's some value of k. This locus is here when k is equal to naught. Yeah. And here, at some value of k, it gets to there. An oscillation start. As k increases, it gets to there. As k increases still further, it might get to there. Yeah, it is unstable. Okay. Right. So, uh, somebody mentioned Nyquist and Bode. Yeah, and what I, I had another kind of root makers question if I could ask that. Uh, please do. Okay, so. Can I got take my coat off? Yeah. <laughs> Is, is it possible for me to draw the question? Uh, I can, if oh, it's easier. Yeah, Go on. Okay. So, so, so you just sure. have a transfer, a GH of that. Uh, over S to the 4. Yep, yeah, S plus G. So, so, so they're all at they're all ah, minus this is uh, last year's question, or one? It's uh, uh, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, similar okay. question. Okay, so yeah. you've got K over S plus something? Uh, S plus 2. C. 2. That's 2. It. 2. 2. two. Oh, hey. And brackets the power of four. Four. Yep. Right. Okay, so so on the root locus they'd all be at minus two, which, which I understand. Yeah. And the question asks, um, yeah. determine the value of k at the stability point, oh, which easy. is which is obviously when the x has reached. If, if it's so they're all there, the locus does yeah. that near enough. So simply, what you do is. You'd work out the distance, the diagonal distance, when the x's reach. It, you want the that one. When it gets to there, yeah. you want that one, which is one of them. Yeah. You want that one, which is two of them, and you want them four times. Four times, yeah. Yeah. So because there are four of them. So the vertical distance, or the um, the diagonal distance, is two root two. Oh, that's two. Pythagoras. Yeah. What was he? He was good, wasn't he? Some of the two sides equals the hypotenuse squared or some such. Do you remember that one? Yeah. But yeah, so 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 that, that gives and you I, the I think I've got the diagonal distance. Why numbers? So my two and two so and the two, square root two, of two, two and two, two, two yeah. times two times two divided by the number you first thought of. And is, it, is it that two, two square root two? So yeah, so, so, <coughs> so that distance is two root two and you simply just times two root two by four. And that's your value of k. Yeah, yeah. And, and the reason you got it wrong is because in that particular question, there was a, a s plus 2 on the top to the n or something. Yeah. And there was a, or, or two of them, or three of them, right? And you had an s plus 2 on the bottom to the 4, something like that. And you've got to remember that that cat, cat, not the. Uh, no, it wasn't. Oh, it was actually. It, no, you, you, you get it so it does cancel down to 8k right. uh, over yeah, but s. But what two. I did, which was a bit nasty, is I put that as a number. 
so that you had to, to take that into account with K. You had to change K because of that one. Yeah. Or was it... I think it was the two, it was to, two the to the end. Yeah, yeah. That's and then... That's it. Yeah. yeah. So that two to the end, uh, I didn't penalise people for this, by the way. I was generous in the marking because I thought it was a shit thing to do. But basically, you've got to divide K by two to the end yeah. because I put that there. Okay. So, so the answer to yeah. that was you work up the distance, you times that by four because there's obviously four of them. Yeah. And then you then divide by two over to the power to of three K. to get K. Yeah. And that's your value of K at this case. Yeah. That's Be, uh, but explained. normally, I would have just done that. And if, yeah. But I just wanted you to... Uh, I, want okay. to take, I wanted to take a mark off. Okay. Where's your three from? Because you said two to the N. Where do you get a three? Uh, uh, any in number you like. It's, it's in the question. Okay. Oh. Ah, right, okay. I thought like somehow you just pulled no, no, a no. number. I did pull it out of there. <laughs> uh, right, okay. So where have we got? I, I, what I want to stress is this. Going on to Bode and Nyquist is this. I have got a one plus this. Mm -hmm. And in Bode and Nyquist, when you move to Bode and Nyquist, what you do is you again focus on this component, but you take this one over there. Okay. And this becomes minus 180 degrees, which is critical, and a magnitude of one. Okay. So you now study this and keep on comparing it with 180 and one. Okay. That's it, full stop. There is nothing else. So, uh, fundamentally, we take that and we compare it with minus one. So, in taking this, you can even forget the minus one. So, you can just plot this frequency response. When you've plotted this frequency response, you say, hang on a minute, let's compare it with minus one. Okay? I said, the last thing you do, if you're interested in stability. So, let's... Which do you fancy, a Nyquist or a Bode? Preferably a Bode. Bode, or both, did you say? A Bode. A Bode. Both. Both. <laughs> yeah. um, right. So, you must know, you must know what frequency response is, uh, if for no other reason that you know what hi-fi is. And if you think of beyond there, you might also know about frequency responses in dynamics or frequency you must have come across frequency responses what does high fi mean high fidelity what does that mean something <laughs> it just means that i got a wide frequency response so it goes up to the limits of our ears so if it's low fidelity you have low frequency response yeah and that's the bottom of our i, I seem to have not brought with me can you use your paper uh, yeah, yeah why not? no but the moment to rub the blackboard yeah yeah you use one of the paper oh, I got one, I got oh, okay one. <coughs> right so i've just rubbed it off but what i'm going to do is take gh and plot its frequency response What we'll do, first of all, is build them up. Okay? So we've got K over S plus A. Example one. Uh, for reasons which will become clear to you, what I want to do is put that to K over A and A over K omega plus A. Same thing, um, you make S, e which is equal to sigma plus J omega. That's its definition. And we're just going to forget the sigma. So S becomes J omega, and we've got a J omega there. The reason for doing that is that so when omega goes to naught, I get k over a. And when omega goes to, is equal to a, 
I get a magic point. Yeah, so I'm plotting a graph against omega. So along here, I've got omega. And when omega is equal to A, you can sh and, and this is magnitude angle. And it's a complex number. So you've done complex numbers before, and you know that you can express that as a magnitude and an amplitude. Magnitude and an angle. So first, I mean, that's what the bow plot does. So we take the magnitude, and the magnitude of that, I can plot like that as a function of omega. So when omega is naught, and this is a log scale, so it never gets to naught, but when omega is equal to naught, I've got one. And uh, any log of one is naught. Because you'd, you'd sub that into the, there's an equation from that for dBs is 20, yeah, yeah, 20 yeah, log yeah, 10. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I've also got up here a constant which is k over a. Yeah. So this is independent of frequency, and that's that bit, and this is it. Why did I put it up there? I want it out of the way. I don't want it messing my graph up. And I can make k any value you like. Um, it's actually 20 lump to the base 10 of k over a, because this axis is in dBs. So to put it in dBs, you have to do that. Take its log. Why do we do that? Because everything in the world is logarithmic. Nothing is linear. Our hearing, our sight, our pressure feeling is logarithmic. We don't have linearity in, in the natural world. So when this came about and they used it for audio first. Oh, hang on, our ears aren't, I don't have a linear scale. Well, I don't, because at the very bottom I can't hear anything, and at the very top I can't hear anything, and in between I've got a logarithmic scale. Uh, not only that, but we put this on a log scale as well. And that allows us to look at a decent range of frequency. So down here we could put point 0.1, and here we would put, at uh, this point we would say is 1, and this point we would say is 10, and this point we would say is 100. Or whatever numbers you give me for A. Yeah. Uh, and at this point, when omega uh, a, a is 1 or, uh, or normalized or whatever, we get that, and we get minus 3 dBs. Why minus 3 dBs? Because 20 log to the base 10 of 1 over root 2, it's root 2 because it's logarithmic, is 3. So we've said here that we haven't got omega, but we've got a, and the a's cancel out. We've got 1 over j omega plus 1, and it's that point, and it's minus 3 dBs down. I'll say that again. So we're saying omega equals a. Mm -hmm. That cancels out 1 over 1 plus j. And if you take the 1 over 1 plus j and take its log, you get minus 3. 1 over 2, I mean, 1 over root 2. Yeah. Uh, put a in there, cancel the a's out, and you get 1 over 1 plus 1, but j1. 1 plus j1. 1 plus j1 when you take its magnitude and take its logs, is minus three. So it's on the bottom line. So, <coughs> so you equate A to JW. Where did the j omega come no, I mean, you, you equate A to JW. If I put an A in there, yep. and say omega is equal All to right, A, a. Yeah. then I got A, 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 and I take yep. the A out, I get one over, over one, one plus one, j. one over J one plus one, which in log terms is minus three. Just because. Okay. Yeah. Is so that where? So, so you take the magnitude of the bottom? Uh, no, and the top. On the top. Yeah, but that's always, it's always going to be normalized. Because okay. I've made it normalized by taking this out here. So if I had a, a 
uh, multiplied by b over j b plus b. Mm -hmm. I I might have to put a B in there because I didn't have one there to start with. Mm -hmm. yeah? And you do that for all of them. You normalize them so that when I get to B, then I've got this. Yeah? And then I've got that, so I have to add that to that. Fortunately, I'm on a log scale, so multiplication be that multiplication becomes out. Mm -hmm. so is that when? Is that the stability point then? When? Uh, no, no, we haven't got there. Oh. There's one thing missing for stability. Magnitude of one and phase phase of ninety. Is it? No, no, no nearly. I like the answer. Uh, in the Nyquist diagram we got minus one. So we got a magnitude of one and a phase of 180, 180 degrees. Yeah? So I need to plot here a magnitude of one and a phase of 180 degrees. I haven't done phase yet. That's the other part of this diagram. Phase. So I have to plot the phase as well as the magnitude. And then I've got a bow plot. So the phase is going to start off at zero. Why? Because uh, at very low, low frequencies, you've got A over A and B over B when omega doesn't, is so small that it doesn't exist. Right. So when omega is sufficiently small, you've got A over A. Here would be no phase. So you'll be here. When omega is very large, very, very large, then you forget the A's and you've got 90 and 90. J <coughs> being 90 and 90. So they're on the bottom line, so they're negative. So what we know is that the phase will do this. Something like that. And this will be 180 degrees. Lots of 90. And this one here, if you go down here, this will be minus 45. Is there calculation for that curve or this law? No, I'm just plotting the phase of that. Right. So I'm, just, I'm just putting in omega for different values. Right. right. And as I put them in, I will, for one of those, I know that. Initially, uh, the page will do that down to minus 90. So it's like on the, Ny the Nyquist diagram, the page will do that and go to minus 90. Right, so basically just substitute o omega with different values. Omega with different values. If you do it for the Nyquist, and this is a real and imaginary. For all omegas or only for certain ones? get the same picture. Well, I mean, you've got each term, right? Oh yeah, you've got to do one for each. So there's like three phases. Three? Because there's I've only got three, two right? phases. Oh, this one I've got a phase. Normally you've got two phases then. One phase and one phase. So they're separate. No, I've added them together. I could have plotted them separately, like I plotted that separately. Right. But here, I went down to minus 180, so I plotted them together. So, this so I added the phase separately. to that. There. That's got 90 degree phase shift, and that's got a 90 degree phase shift. You, you added the two phases together? Yeah, for this one I did, yeah. Here, yeah, I haven't added the magnitude together yet because I don't want to. I haven't got room. But the magnitude does adds as well because it's logarithmic, so I've got to add that for that. So I've got to go along here, adding those two together, two, two curves together. This one plus this one. So you can see that we'll go along here until this one comes into operation. Right? And when we get to here, I've got to add that to that. So this one will start going down like that. And what I've done is added those two on a logarithmic scale, so I can add them. Multiplication becomes addition. That multiplied by that is addition on so a log scale. So for this one, which values are you substituting for the top, the top one? 
with for the non phase the this top one. one. Yeah, well, which value are you substituting it? I'm plotting that combined. Yep. By adding that and that. So what I'm what I mean for that, the top this example for one term, how you get the curve? This one. Yeah, the top top curve. What value are you substituting to get the curve? This curve. Mm, this any of them. This curve? Yeah. Like what's this value? Curve. I'm changing omega in there. Right. And I'm moving omega along here. From one to ninety. From uh, I'm taking it from below A to above A. So right. here is A, omega equals A, and I've gone down here a little way until omega is much less than A. Right. And then I've come up here and gone along here until omega is much bigger than A. Right. Yeah, and this curve is the same for B. I've gone down here until omega is much less than B, and I've plotted that on at zero. And then I've got to when omega is equal to b, and then I'm minus 3 dBs down, and omega equals b, and then I've gone along and plotted this curve when omega is much bigger than b. And then I've added that to that. Those two curves together. Does a b ever have a number, or we just calculate symbolic? A has always got a number. Give me a number. What number would you like? Three? Three. Right. So... I'll put three in there. What number would you like for B? It's going to be bigger than three because I've drawn it. Uh, five. Five. Well, if I use five, they'll be very, very close together. Okay, yeah. So if I double it or whatever, I'll have uh, ten. And then I put the, the resistance in the capacitance and inductance of my circuit is A of B, A and B of five and ten or my friction and inertia of my mechanical system gave parameters A and B, 5 and 10. Yeah. Right. And I got it. There we are. That's your 5 and 10 of your system that you're trying to modify, model. Okay. And how much smaller? Is, is there a limit? How much, how much smaller? Any how much number bigger? you like. Give me the number. Does it matter how small? Zero? 10 million. They can't have zero because uh, uh, this is a logarithmic scale. So zero doesn't exist. <laughs> one? Does one exist? Yeah, one exists, and so does point no 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 one. And so does ten to the trillion. Right. Okay. Yeah. And so this is the last bit of this bow plot before we do the Nyquist diagram. What I'm interested in is is stability limit. Well, I need another one, don't I? I can't have just two. 180 degrees is no good, because the 180 degree on the Nyquist diagram does that, and is never unstable. So I need a third one. So can we put a squared? Let's put a squared on there. Yeah. So I've got three terms. Three terms gives me 270. You happy? What it means is that this one at omega equals b will go down at twice the gradient. The square means that you multiply and you when you when it's squared, uh, the six, three d six dBs per octave becomes twelve dBs per octave. So this was uh, for b. Now I have to redraw this so that it goes down. So I redraw both of these so that this one goes down like that. So, so would that be minus when it omega equals b? Would that then be minus six? Thanks for that, because this is minus 6 dBs per octave, and this one is minus 12 dBs per octave. Octave is when you double, and that's equivalent to minus 20 dBs per decade. So an octave is when you double, and the decade is when you multiply by 10. 
Does it matter which? Can you use either one? They're totally equivalent. So you'd you'd accept either one as you yeah, yeah. Okay. So what I mean, at, at the end, you just square it, because last term, is that what you're doing? Up here, now I'll put a square one, yeah. No, I mean, after all these, and last step, you square the last term. I square down here, and you look around your native. You don't have to do this by sketch, so long as it's reasonable. So you find the, the minus 180 point, because that's the stability limit, and you take this up to the magnitude plot. Now, the, the, I've got to add that, and that, and that. So I just add these two. So I take 180, and then I've got to add that magnitude on the first one, and that magnitude on the second one. So I need this plus that. I add those two together, I add that, that, and this. That point, that point, and that point. I.e., I add that, that, and that. And when I add those, it's got to be greater than the norm. It's got to go above the one. So I have that and that. They seem to almost cancel each other out. And then I have to add that to it. That, those three. Minus those three have got to give you one. You can see that that one is much bigger than one. These are much smaller than one. So I now increase k so that when I add that plus that, I get k. And that at the moment, that is my stability margin. That plus that minus that. And it's positive. So in Nyquist, what I've done is I've done that, and I have a stability margin. And my stability margin is that. And that's the amount I've got to change the gain to get to minus 1. And dear old Grim Lopez, what have we got? We've got three terms. We've got those, that, and that. So, I, and th uh, this is not a catch, but it's something everybody misses. Um, if I do this, then I'm going to do that, and do that, and do that, and I'm going to say that that is k star. That is the point where k reaches the stability limit. That k is not that k because I divided both by a and b. Yeah? And last year or the year before, I didn't knock off any put marks because I thought I wasn't testing that. But you could argue I should have done because some students got the, uh, put the normalization in. So what did you say, sorry, about finding okay. the phase? I, I, I just this one, yeah. this is the root locus, okay. and the root locus k is that one. Okay. Yeah? I don't do any normalization, but the k I've got here has got a and b in it. That lump has got a and b in it. So just be careful how you um, quote the k's uh, <coughs> here. You cho we chose to normalize it. And so the value up here is k over a b. And when you read this value off, you're not reading off k. You're but reading off k over a b. I thought you were adjusting k to get it, get negative 1. Yes, I did. But, um, but this, if I look at this, it's got k over a b. Yep. So this value here is k over a b. So I'm comparing k over a b with one. Yep. Here, I'm comparing k with the stability limit. What I mean is that you, you, you keep adjusting to get negative one, so, but you don't have to adjust that k again, will you? Uh, this k, stability, is, yep, is the final value. Is that value. It is not that value. But on here, you've got that value. 
Go just like divide by AB. Uh, it's a, look, it's when, when people didn't do it last year or the yeah. year before, whatever year, I didn't deduct any marks. So what I mean is that for, instead of doing and that, I put a little comment on the, on the model answers. I was generous here. I didn't bother about whether they divided oh, by this AB year. or not. Well, maybe it won't be there this year, just but I'll be generous. Because you plus it at the end, right? And to get K. Could it just take K and divide by AB straight away without plusing it? I don't know what the, uh, I, uh, I, I want to plot that and that. Because you're plusing there, down there, the, the magnitude. So I want to plot that. Yep. So what I mean is that you're you, you plusing the magnitude where 180 meets the three points. Where A meets what? See the three points where the, the yeah. you plus it, right? You're I, plusing I it. To, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I, uh, These are you add them together. Uh, These three points, so, or what do you do with them? I, this is, here's the 180 degree phase. Yep, and then that. I've got the magnitude and yep. the magnitude. Yep. Yeah? So I've got to add that to that. Yep. I.e., that value. Yep. And that oh, value. It's K. Yeah? And both of those are values on a logarithmic scale. Oh, so those are A and B? No, they're Ks. They're no. K at that frequency. Yeah? The contribution of one of those at that frequency. The ch change in gain. Let's do that one. Okay. Is there. Well, I'm just curious that couldn't you just take KAB and divide it by the values of KA and B? Could uh, you do that? Oh no, that's not, in, uh, that's not correct. Okay, let me say it one more time. The K over there is that one. Exactly. But yeah. you're given the first value, right? So what if you divide by that, that front value by A and B straight and away? I normalize it to put that A up there and that B up there. Yep. Yeah. So if I took that away, then I get this K over here. Yep. Yeah, well, I mean, instead of adding those three, yeah. could you just do that straight away? Oh, no. Well, no. you can't do it straight away until you've plotted the things, can yeah. you? You've got to plot them first. Well, you know the fun value, right? Uh, you know KAB. Why do we do this? We do this because we want to normalize this graph. Yeah, that's all. Just for, for reasons of plotting it. You could... You could take this one and this one and put them up on on that value and that value, but then you don't get the three dB values. In fact, that's what it is. We want to not, we want to put them into line. Anyway, so this is Bodrum Lindquist. Just to finish off, shouldn't we do the root locus? Is that it? Is that only three three stuff you're asking for in the in the final exam? That's it. I. I do, there is one nasty question if you look through the, bad pu the, the papers. Um, so have a step at it? No, no, no. It's a horrible question because it's really it's just tests maths. You're not going to ask it, are you? Every year. <laughs> they could have a step at it if you want to ask no, this year. No, 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 look, 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 look. It's this. It's this. I'm, I'm always thinking and trying to find a, a, a que an exam question. So. This is a, a Nyquist diagram, and you draw it, right? And it's got the vertical in it. And this is omega. And this is the uh, real part, and this is the imaginary part. You, you'll see these in past papers if you look. So this curve is omega equals naught, and omega tends to infinity. So, and it's a the difference between here and here is that this is linear. So, for a small amount of omega, <coughs> you, uh, sorry, you have to move a large amount of omega to, to compensate for the log scale. This is the minus one point, and. This is not this year's exam question. Uh, the question says, what is the value of k at the stability limit? Yeah. 
Mm. And you have to first work out, so I'm looking for that case. Uh, the problem is that if we take this example, you've got k over s plus a squared, s plus a, s plus b squared, s plus a, s plus b. And this is the Lagos diagram of it. So if I need to find out k at the stability limit, I need to find that point to be minus 1. And therefore, I need to put in values in there to find that. And the way I do that, I find the omega by saying that the, the imaginary terms are 0. So I get the equation, this equation, I find the real and imaginary terms for it, and I let omega go to naught. And that gives me the value of, uh, sorry, I, go, I let the imaginary terms go to naught. That gives me the value of omega here, omega is that. And you've got the parameters, and it's horrible, because it's just complex numbers manipulations and you'll see it on when you're in the class later I don't set it too often because I wonder why I'm setting it just test your ability to manipulate complex numbers so how would you, would you have manipulated uh, hang on I'm just saying I turn it into real plus J imaginary yep. yeah yep and the imaginary terms here are zero so I let this equal to naught, and I get a value of omega. Yep. Yeah. Right. And when I've got a value of omega, I know that that's that value there. Right. Yeah. Uh, sorry, that's the values of the real terms when omega is equal to naught. When omega is equal to the stability limit, and then I say, is it bigger or less than minus one? If it's bigger in magnitude than minus one, the system is unstable. If it's less... So we don't even have to plot it at all? Yeah, well, you can plot it because it helps your brain. Can you just calculate it? Is it take a point if you don't plot it at all? Well, I don't know what the first part of the question might say. Right, okay. first part of the question might say, plot the uh, Nyquist diagram when k is such that you're at the stability limit. And then... That's that. For, for it, it, it's occurred in history. Let me for this group, for that group, you just draw like that shell shape and just point uh, the well K. <laughs> that is only applicable to that. Right. So I'll draw Nyquist diagrams that might be applicable to others. Oh, by the way, on the last year's paper, you haven't got last year's answers because I've lost them. Um. So, uh, Nyquist diagram, uh, k over s plus a. k over s plus a squared. k over s plus a cubed. k over s plus a to the fourth. Etc ever increasing and all you've got to think about is what's the final phase final phase is a function of that n great questions so it doesn't necessarily go through the stability point minus one it could for instance go through the point minus two for instance just randomly and, uh, you, uh, and it's, it's all a function of k yeah but what, what I'm saying is the you label the end on the left side minus yeah, one. Minus one. But this trans the function doesn't necessarily go through that point minus one. Uh, to uh, find out where it no, crosses hang you. On, hang on. That's got to be more than two. Isn't it? Yep. To get more than 180 degrees. Yeah. So if it's only two, then there's it's this one. It comes in 180 degrees. Mm -hmm. If it's three 
it comes it's this one. Yeah. If it's four, it comes in at three sixty. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is that even if it is uh, cubed, it doesn't necessarily go through the point minus one. No. But the, the gap there is your static margin. It's the stability, stability margin. margin. Sorry, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and what is more, all I've got to do is increase k, and then we'll go through this yeah. one. Okay. That makes sense. Good. So would that be the same for, say, say if it wasn't s plus a to the four, it was like s plus a, s plus b. Ds plus c, s plus d, s plus It would still go through the four. If you've got four of them, yeah. Okay. So it's, it's exactly like this, look. It's exactly like this. We didn't have... We had A and B here. So we had two curves. Okay. Yeah, but finally the slope was the same. Yeah. And the phase was the same, 180 degrees or 360. Yeah. So these are exactly complementary. This is the same information as this, this is the same. The only fundamental difference is this is not logs. And the reason that you use logs is because it's more natural, more um, the real world. Yeah, the real world, and so uh, that's uh, the other thing is since here we've got zero frequency, but we know that frequency isn't zero ever, and we know that when we're in the uh, music industry, it's uh, associated with our ear, with speakers and vibrations and things. So you will see uh, Nyquist diagrams that look like this because we haven't gone down to a zero frequency. Because we can't. So they look like that. And you know when you've changed the function from uh, k over s plus a of uh, s here. plus b squared, yeah. Would that k over a b, would it be k over a b squared if you squared No, no, no. Or it just uh, stays as b? Yeah, and then you've got to take the a out because you put it up there. Okay. You've got to take the b out. Oh, that was b, b squared, yeah. It would, and then, so it'd be k over yeah, because yeah, okay, that, yeah, yeah, so yeah, it, it cancels out. Okay. Yeah. And I could have made the second the b squared equal to c, and then changed yeah, it a yeah, bit. Okay. Just here for that equation, <coughs> k over a plus b, like what sort of solve will be given? K will be given, a and b will, would be. Am I correct? No, that's uh, no, 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 depends have to give on the you numbers. I give you a and b, and you do what I do. And you just plot it like that. Just, just estimate. No, they are real numbers, but I've spent most of the time just calling them A and B rather than 100 and 200. Right. But I could have put 100 and 200 in there. But K is not given. Uh, K is, a, in all cases, K is a variable. It's the gain, the loop gain. Otherwise, we have, I mean, remember what we said is that we've got 1 plus GH and we've got 1 plus k s plus a over s plus b yep. or whatever you want so we always start with 1 plus gh because that is the characteristic equation and if I ever set an exam paper that doesn't have two, quest two papers on it that doesn't say characteristic equation I'll give you a million pounds <laughs> Not, not that I got a million pounds. This is a top one. You said that 20, 20 log k over a b. If you don't know k, how can you know that limit? If you don't know k? Yeah, because you say k is not... Well, k, you can make k any number. K is your... Yeah, you YouTube. know, when you go to your hi-fi and you turn the volume up, how do you know the limits of it? It will go to a little higher. Yeah, you... <laughs> The same thing, same concept. Oh, just just any vellum number. Any number, any volume you like, but that suits your ear. And if you're in the disco, it's quite high. And if it's not, if it's in your stereo, personal stereo, you turn it down a bit. If you've got any sense. And then if I care of the, of the stability. Yeah, yeah. And then you can say k is a variable. What value would you like? Right, and then at the end you find a key that maybe that is not too loud, not too soft. Exactly right. That, that's what you're doing. And, and that's exactly what we're doing. And so we're saying this is stability. Let's find this value because it's got far enough away from the stability limit. Or, or in the root locus, and this is the, the, M, this, 
now demonstrates the benefit of the root locus, you say, let's choose a value of k, which makes sure that the system doesn't oscillate. Yeah? So you choose a value of k, so that the closed loop poles sit there, and the system doesn't oscillate. Yeah? Easy, isn't it? You don't agree with me. Either, <laughs> Phase? Could it go through phase if you don't mind? Anyway, I'm back tomorrow. Right. Good. Is that the um, same? I'm back tomorrow at, did I say 2 30? No, 10 o'clock, 10 30. I don't know, literally, there's a time. I did, I did, subsequently, 10 30. Somebody wanted me to, are you any of you mechanical? Nope. Because uh, some in mechanical, they've got. What is it, aerospace? We've got it, um, oral. We, yeah, we have um, presentations tomorrow. What time? Oh, just there all day. Yeah, all day.